All right, so once we've finished um, stacking and tweaking uh, each segment using Redis stacks, uh, we're going to see that there's an, some artifacts as a result of image stacking that we need to get rid of. <clears throat> Earth and View can crop and get rid of that, but I would prefer to use uh, Photoshop. So what we're going to do is open this up using Photoshop. So <clears throat> I have it set up to where any image that comes up in Photoshop has this crop uh, adjustment tool, so to speak. So what I, all I do is I move it enough to where um, I just have minimal information to, to delete um, using using the crop tool all right so I'll go into image and crop and see how we look see if there's any more of that so it looks like we have um, the unwanted uh, data removed from this image so the next thing to do then is simply uh, save as and our last file that we saved had a Registax uh, uh, ending on it and I'm simply going to add Photoshop save it as I normally do with my Photoshop uh, touch-ups and then from here I would pretty much go ahead and move this to where I keep all the other um, Photoshop captures or the segments and I have them in here all right and just bear with me Photoshop crop All right, folks, in this segment, we're going to cover um, Microsoft Image Composite Editor, and I'll show you how I use it to stitch um, all the segments that I uh, took of the moon and use this software to put them all together, or to stitch them all together. Uh, the wonderful thing about this software is it's free, and it really does all the work with minimal clicking, as you'll see here. So we start off with the click on New Panorama from Images. It opens up the folder that was last used in and so all I have to do is hit control A and hit open and it'll load all the images in the software next it's going to go through and align all the images and start compositing the images and it usually takes a few minutes to do so but with the uh, um, nifty editing we will speed the process up for you okay so now uh, we have the composite image showing you uh, the moon as it was for March 26th. And um, all we need to do is hit next. And we're using a crop tool. And so we're going to try to use the crop tool to get rid of some of this gray area that you see here. I don't want to get too close to the surface. All right, just one more. And a nice feature that this has is an autocomplete. And here we go. While you may not be able to see it on your screen, there's gonna be some gray areas here, which we can 
mostly get rid of to the point where it's almost uh, undetectable later on. But this is pretty much it. Um, and this software is free. That's what's nice about it. I've used other software uh, similar to this. Earthenview, which you've seen before, you know, earlier in the presentation, I u I've used it. But this works so much better and effortlessly. Um, so all I do is hit next. And now I'm ready to export. Now I always use um, TIFF because it allows me, uh, well, for one thing, it's what I've been using all through this process. And it just allows me uh, to do more with it. All right, so I'm going to hit export to disk. And you notice that uh, the software puts in the word stitch. Okay, so I'm just going to hit save. And that is it for um, the Microsoft Image Composite Editor portion. Next, what we will do is we will open this up using uh, Photoshop and do really minimal uh, uh, detail adjustment, followed by Luminar. All right, folks, in this segment, uh, we're going to use Photoshop to bring out a little bit of details and try to correct some of this uh, lighter color of black that you see in here. It might be even a little bit of gray. Uh, and if Photoshop can't do it, Luminar will do a, a much better job at, with these details without taking too much from this image. So whenever I do uh, most of my... Um, imaging in the solar system objects, I have the crop tool come up because I usually will have to crop it up some. Try to get it equal. And I just go into image and crop. And then I use um, a particular filter in here called camera raw filter. And it is an exceptional photo editing tool. So all I'm going to do here is reduce um, blacks just a little bit. And I'm going to go with some contrast. And this will, you, you think it might be okay until you start using contrast and it becomes a little more clearer. I'm just doing a little bit at, at a time. Maybe even the dehaze. Let me take a step back here and kind of see. may bring the dehaze um, back a little bit or almost all of it to back to zero once I'm done with Photoshop I go ahead, I'll go ahead and hit file and then save as and since the previous uh, version of this was with the Microsoft uh, Image Composite Editor, I'm going to add the Photoshop extension to it. And again, that's so I never um, mess with the previous edition or the original file. That's why I add on whatever step I'm going to do to it. So that ends uh, the Photoshop segment, and we have one more a software to use and that's Luminar. I'm going to close out Photoshop. Alright, so for Luminar I'll just take the uh, image that I last used Photoshop in, right click and select Open With 
and go to Luminar. And again, I've, I've already got it open just to save a little bit of time. All right, and um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this. All right, and that's so I can get a good view of Tycho and also get um, a good view of the craters here. And this was um, some of the bright points of light on the on the moon. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in one more time, bring it up to 200 percent. And so you you might be able to see some pixelation here and some of that. Well, um, it's just noise. Um, I wasn't, I didn't get enough, uh, maybe enough images to reduce the noise. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes a thousand frames is more than enough and I get really good detail. And if you also noticed on this software, it's not your eyes playing tricks on you. As I move the screen, it, it, the detail is blurry. When I release it with the mouse, it goes back to, a little, to being a little sharper. But you can definitely, or at least I can here, see um, where it's pixelated some, and that's at 200%. Normally I can go to 3 or 400% before I see any pixelation. So that's going to be pretty much it um, for the light feature. As far as AI Enhance, it uh, doesn't really do anything for this particular image. I have used these in the past on some images of the moon and it makes an amazing difference. Um, sometimes in this case it doesn't. But I'm going to try to bring out some of the other color details here. Not, not much. Okay, and that's just subtle. I don't want I don't want too much. And then the, there's a details enhancer which this Luminar is worth what I pay for it just for this feature alone, details enhancer, because there's small details, medium details, and it's just great. Um, I am going to go zoom out because I want to make sure I'm not over darkening this. Okay, and I'm going to bring the medium details down to zero at least close to it. All right. And I'm going to mess with this a little bit more. I know I said I was done with it. And really and truly, um, as far as bringing out any detail with this, it's been minimal, completely minimal. Um, I really haven't tried to, to tweak the details um, because from my view here, there's a lot of detail in here. Um, it even looks um, a little cooked. But when you bring out, you know, the zoom in, that, that actually looks pretty impressive, or at least far more appealing. So you got Copernicus and Kepler there, this being Copernicus and this being Kepler. You got Plato over here. And of course there's Tycho, the most prominent crater on the moon. And uh, you can actually see uh, Tycho easily with just small pair of binoculars. All right. Well, that's pretty much all I'm going to do with the Luminar. But um, the, you know, we talked about uh, using um, um, Auto Stacker, Registax, the Microsoft Image Composite Editor. We've also talked about uh, using Photoshop and Luminar. Um, most of that software is free, Photoshop and Luminar isn't. And uh, the reason I use Photoshop and Luminar really and truly is because of the tools they have in it. It's you using those tools saves me a lot of time uh, bringing out the details and doing what I want 
to do or getting to what I want to see with the finished product. Uh, some people say they can do more with uh, GIMP. Well, that's that's good. I tried using GIMP for a number of years, and I once I started using Photoshop, I, I never looked back. So once you're done in Luminar, all you really got to do is hit export. And I always force it to go to the uh, folder that I want it to. And I select folder. And then I will add the Luminar extension. And hit export. And as this is exporting out, please know that, you know, this is, this was not a how-to uh, tutorial. It was simply uh, how I do things uh, with regard to image processing, uh, solar system objects, and these, this is all the software I use. Um, and it generally works pretty well. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please let me know. And if you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up and um, I, I would appreciate it. Um, and if you didn't, I would appreciate some constructive criticism. This is still pretty new to me. Um, most of my videos, there's no voice added into it. There's no technical involvement in it from most of my videos. And my hat's off to all those that have done this uh, sort of thing with, uh, it seems like they make it, uh, they make it look easy, but it's really not. I can't tell you how many times I've had to remake certain areas of this video presentation. Well, that's it, folks. Hope you enjoyed it and take care.